You think you know what we're going to talk about. And welcome back to Three Fates Decide. It just sounds more dramatic that way. All right. So this week we are going to be talking about... But just when you least expect it, we changed the game. One Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. I mean, we always celebrated Easter. You're part of the Half-Blood Prince. So we're going to do another free talk, freestyle thing. No planned discussion. At the end of the day, only one thing matters. We decide. But we're going to hit the, the, the main highlight. That is the thing that we were saying back in that episode. A quick recap. Three Fates Decide podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Three Fates Decide. My name is Liz, and I am your solo host for this episode. In this episode, I'm going to do a brief audio essay regarding superhero movies. Now, you'll probably notice, especially if you're a longtime listener to our podcast, that in the last few months, Sam, Mary, and I haven't done too many episodes related to any of the superhero movies, in particular Marvel, which is what all three of us are mutually interested in. And we've made some slight references to the reason, but basically we, like so many longtime MCU fans, are feeling a lot of fatigue, to be frank especially in relation to everything that has been released as part of Phase 4 of the MCU, which happens to coincide with the fact that we have experienced a global pandemic. And yeah, I'm sure a lot of you who listen to this podcast are also fans of the MCU. I could talk about DC a little bit, but the fact of the matter is DC has its own issues that are pretty different from what's happening with Marvel. So I'm not going to talk about them, but I'm mostly going to focus on the MCU in particular. Basically, my co-hosts and I are pretty tired out for the most part regarding superhero stuff, which is why I personally have not watched too many things in Phase 4. I've basically put it off because I'm just a bit tired because Disney slash Marvel has been releasing and producing way too much content in a very short amount of time, which I'm sure all of you guys have noticed as well. And it's just exhausting trying to keep up with it. But the thing also is that not only is it way too much content being released in a very short amount of time, but another complaint that I have, and I'm sure plenty of you guys also have, is the fact that probably half of the stuff that got released in Phase 4 have no connection to the multiverse storyline that they are very clearly trying to establish. And the thing is, that was one of the things that made the Infinity Saga a lot of fun to watch. Not only did each of the movies act as really good stories to watch as like separate movies and in some cases trilogy for certain superhero characters or whatever but they still tie into the whole saga that they were building up with the infinity stones and in phase four it's very uneven. You do have some movies and shows that do tie in together, but then you have things like Moon Knight and She-Hulk who have no obvious connections to the multiverse thing. Technically, a movie like Shang-Chi doesn't have much of a connection, but you're still somewhat intrigued enough in what got introduced in that movie to want to see what eventually happens with the character. And the fact they did include some cameos with Wong and then later Bruce and Carol show up in the bonus after credit scene, as well as the abomination. It does give you some sense of the characters introduced in this movie will come back and tie together with the more established characters. So a movie like that isn't too bad, but then you keep getting more material that just doesn't really seem to fit in and you're left 
very puzzled. I did do some meta research on Marvel Comics. So I do have some general ideas like who some of these characters are that they're introducing to us. And from that perspective, I'm willing to give those characters a chance in terms of how they're going to fit in to the narrative and to future projects. But I'm sure for a lot of people in the audience, you're just straight up confused. Who are any of these people? What do they have to do with anything? At least in the Infinity Saga, when they did start introducing you to characters that you don't know, you either get a really interesting origin story for them, or they get introduced as minor characters in a movie with more established characters, and then you get an expanded story later, which is what they did with Black Panther. We met T'Challa in Civil War, and then after that, we got a Black Panther solo movie, and we recently got the sequel to it. Same thing with you have the introduction of Vision and Wanda in Age of Ultron. They made many appearances through the rest of the saga, and then you get WandaVision in Phase 4, where you get a more concentrated look of the two characters that you didn't really get to have in the movies. The way they introduced characters to the audience in the Infinity Saga has been pretty good, but with Phase 4, it's very uneven. And I think the online criticism that had been building for the last year regarding Phase 4 is finally getting to Disney and Kevin Feige because based off of some of the various articles that have come out in the last two to three months and also Ant-Man's box office results is making it very clear to the powers that be over on the Marvel side of Disney that the strategy they were doing in Phase 4 is clearly not going to work if they do something like that again in Phase 5 and 6. There had been some rumors I heard about that there is a bit of chaos at Disney Studios regarding how they are going to handle Phase 5 and 6. Because, of course, at San Diego Comic-Con, Kevin Feige does his big presentation on the upcoming projects related to the upcoming phases. But of course, he didn't put very solid dates. They're just like estimated dates, or he was just very vague about when they anticipate certain projects being released. But from what I recall, the timelines he was revealing in that panel were overly aggressive. Quite a few people actually commented online about how the schedule looked way too aggressive and it's way too much content coming out in a matter of a one to two year period. And I remember chit-chatting with a bunch of other fans online and we all groaned a bit collectively speaking, when we saw the rough schedule he released because we were like, oh my god, they're going to just dump stuff in front of us again, like what they ended up doing with Phase 4, and I'm probably not going to watch like half of it for another five years or something because I just don't have the time or patience to sit there and watch all of this stuff. And the thing is that, like I said earlier, if there's no clear connections between the projects, which would make it worth the time and effort to watch everything, then I'm just not going to be motivated to watch it within that time period that you're releasing it because it's just too much. And not to mention, there's plenty of other content being released. Like actually, for some of you listeners, as you are well aware, I did a very long solo episode related to the first season of House of the Dragon. And when that was being released on HBO, like new episodes of that every week for 10 weeks, I spent way more time focused on watching that than anything Marvel related at all. I didn't bother catching up on anything I'd missed. I didn't bother watching any stuff that was being released around the same time. Partially it was again because of the fatigue 
in terms of like way too much content is being thrown at me. Game of Thrones, the TV series had ended back in 2019. And of course, House of the Dragon got released in 2022. So it's been about three years since there's been anything Westeros related that happened in terms of television content, whatever. So that just reignited my interest because of curiosity to see what a different group of people working on this universe again, how good a job are they going to do? And if you guys hadn't already listened to that episode, I highly recommend if you have the time and patience to go check out my really long solo review slash overview of the first season of House of the Dragon, which is episode 68. So go look it up and check it out. And related to that, actually, I found out that even though they didn't put out a firm release date, the second season is going to come out the summer of 2024. Some of the executives involved in the show have made it clear that they don't want to rush the final product, as it were. So they're not going to try to force the production and most production teams to get everything done for end of the year 23. Because I think they want to make sure that the audience gets really good quality stuff when we watch season two. So they want to give themselves more time to make sure that it turns out to be the best possible season two that they can make. And to be honest, just to segue back to the MCU, another criticism is the fact that some of the recent things that have come out in terms of phase four, the quality, both in terms of the writing and also just the visual effects and post-production and stuff is just not as good as it was in the earlier projects, which is disappointing to fans of the MCU like me who have been following along for years now. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are also fans feel the same way, but I really do hope that some of this criticism that's been thrown at Marvel and Disney for the last couple of years is really getting to them in the sense that they are actually listening to the complaints and criticisms and they're actually going to start doing something about it because let's be honest here in the proverbial war between Marvel and DC despite the criticisms towards the MCU Marvel is clearly winning because as much as we can complain about this that and the other with Marvel at least Marvel has some kind of a plan going on and they do have a track record of doing a really good job producing some very good content in the first three phases and hopefully they are going to fix things for phase five and six going forward but you don't remotely have anything like that at all on the DC side and in fact they are doing more or less a really rough, hard reboot of the whole movie verse that they created. And I don't think there's much evidence that they are doing any real connections between any of the DC TV shows and the movies, which is another negative thing for me personally about DC. I'll be honest, I haven't watched too many of the DC movies. Like, I've watched maybe a couple, but I haven't really watched too many of them. And it's because of the fact that they don't have those connections. Like, they make you have an incentive to actually watch all of these things because there are connections to each other. I know these characters are DC characters and they do interact with each other in the comics and everything. And even in the cartoons they do. But I'm confused. Are they meant to be the same universe as each other? Or are they separate universes? What is the deal here? And the fact that they're more or less separate universes just doesn't really motivate me to want to watch all that stuff. Not that I was to begin with. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy some DC content personally, but I will admit I am more of a Marvel person, so I lean more towards Marvel. But at any rate, I just hope that Phase 5 and Phase 6 will turn out a lot better, and eventually I personally will start catching up on the stuff that I skipped out and missed out on just because like eventually my interest towards Marvel will return but I probably just need a mental break from it and 
want to watch different things and even read different things, which is why the next bunch of solo episodes you're going to hear from me are going to shift away from anything related to superhero stuff. Actually, for those of you who have listened to my previous solo episodes, aside from the one I did on House of the Dragon, I actually did some anime slash manga related content. So some of my future solo episodes will be along those lines. But yeah, that's all for this episode. So before I close out, I just want to remind to some of you longtime listeners as well as newer listeners that we do have a website, which is threefatesdecide.com. I periodically will do updates and changes to the website because I actually am the person who manages it. And whenever I do have free time, I do try to update and post new content. I may be working on some new things to add to the website, but again, it's going to take a little bit of time to actually make it work. So check us out next time and see you soon. Did you like what you heard on our episode today? Well, then feel free to come back and listen to us again. You can find us on all different streaming sites, including Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Deezer, iHeartRadio, Spotify, you name it, we're there. And if you really like us, feel free to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Three Fates Decide. That's T-H-R-E-E, Fates Decide. You can also email us at threefatesdecide at gmail.com. And check out our website at threefatesdecide.com to find other episodes, information about your three hosts, and all of our other links. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time on Three Fates Decide.